Okie dokie, folkies, we are doing more with the Thunderhawk of Thunderhawky goodness. And as you can see, it has wings on it at the moment. What I'd like to show you about this Thunderhawk, as is, is the top still comes off. Let's move that to the side. The interior section is still completely accessible. I've glued so far the nose cone and the cockpit section together. These guys are just blue tacked in so that I can still take them out to paint. And rather than put both pilots in, I've got one pilot in the front and I've got one guy sat at the back, helmet in his lap at some of the stations. So I can paint all of that detail, paint the detail on the inside there, and still get at all the detail on the interior here, which you'll be able to see once everything is all stuck in, glued together, by opening the front hatch. Let's just pop this back in together. So this will be stuck on eventually, the front here. To see that lower detail, it's going to be looking through the front hatch, which I will still have opening and closing. The wings, because one of the big things about this Thunderhawk is I want it to be transportable, aren't actually stuck on. The astute amongst you might have noticed this pin that is running across the back here. <laughs> Come on. One, two. So, what I have done is I have drilled through, uh, apologies for the poor lighting at the moment, I have drilled through and placed a pin running through these sections here. So just at the back of where the um, footprints for the landing gear are. High enough that it's supported through solid resin here as well as the walls. Comes out the sides and they slot into holes that I have drilled in the wings so that they are removable. And it makes life much, much easier for storage and transportation. anything for the easy life. Okay, so that, that, and that. Now I've had two options as to where to proceed from here, landing gear or building up the wings. I've decided to go with building up the wings. So what we're going to look at now are the flaps to go into these gaps here, the engine compartments, the rear engine, the tail section, and the front aerofoils. What I'm not doing yet is the cannon housing across the top here and the weapons because I want to magnetize the weapons and that means I need this cannon housing at the moment left off. So let's take a look at the parts that we're going to be working with next. Right folks, so this is uh, the next series of components that we are going to be working with. We have the two engine intakes for the wing. We have the three exhaust uh, vents for the engines. Uh, two intakes for the wing, two exhausts for the engine, one exhaust throughout the main body. Okay, that's why you have three and two. Uh, two wing sections. And the wing sections you'll see have these sections missing here for the aerofoil flaps. The larger ones are for here, and there's two for each wing. One that goes there, one that goes on the underside. Okay, and you could put them open as air brakes, okay, if you wanted, or up one up, one down uh, to show turning, whatever you want to do with them. Two. Okay, the front aerofoils again have the space for the small flaps to go in and again you could have them flat, you could have them for turning, pitching, whatever you want to do with them. So they're the two front aerofoils, then there is the tail fin. Tail fin, I have taken the Aquila off, uh, whilst I'm here I've just used a craft knife I'll go over that with a Dremel once I'm back down, uh, back down, sorry, back up in Coventry. 
where half my tools are. The upright section of the tail has the large flap in, which again you can put side to side if you want to do turning or just have going straight. On these two locator pegs at the top, you have the front, uh, sorry, the top of this rear wing. Okay, and it goes on this way. So imagine this is the front of the craft, it goes on facing like that, flaps to the back, flat section forward, so that this angle here lines up. If you try and do it the other way with these pegs, the pegs will still fit, but you have this horrible gappy, nasty looking fit. So it goes on like so. I'm going to have my flaps all straight pretty much. I'm not having them open uh, with the exception of the wings, uh, which will be in the air brake position. The tail and the aerofoils will be locked forward. The wings I'm going to have open uh, as though it's pulling the air brake. So let's start looking at that on models. Okie dokie. Aerofoils with the flap in flush. Two of. That's my computer to the side dying. Okay, and it's very important when you're doing the aerofoils to leave these blocks on the side. And I'll show you why in a second. Third engine left as is. Tail fin. Rear flap in flush top flaps in flush the way that I wanted them and stuck together. Each wing, engine intake, let's put some more light this way, uh, engine intake on the front, jet vent on the back, flaps in an open position to work as the air brakes. This section is the upper part of the wing because one of the attack foils closes down onto here the lower side has this recess for the bolter sponson. So that and that for our two wing sections. These you've already seen pinned onto the model. So these are done for the moment and are going back to one side. What we're going to do now is put rear jet, the rear exhaust rather, the front aerofoils and the tail onto the model. So what you can see here is the rear end of the top hull section of the Thunderhawk that I've just taken off. And this bit at the back here is where this uh, engine exhaust vent goes. I have just put a small pin in here, just so that there's something more than the flat contact surface and drill the hole whoop, in the center of that. Copious amounts of super glue and we'll pin the two together. And a quick shot off camera, just so I could get everything together. Now it's important when you're doing this bit, on the top, or well, rather on one side of these engines, and it's present on all three, is this little flat section here. When you're doing this back exhaust, it needs to line up with this slot. Because this slot, oh, let's put that there, is where this fits in the rear wing okay and it fits pretty much like so straight down the slot and fits in this isn't something that I'm going to pin just because it's going to be very awkward to actually get the pin to sit in the right place um, however it should sit nicely because this section here is raised and there is a cutout whoop, here which will fit into this bottom recess. This will go over your raised section and this will fit nicely at the top. So a line of super glue down here and we're gonna fit our tail section on. And now that that's in place, that's the rear section, engine and rear fin. Um, still to do on this section is the gun housing up here, the weapon housing, I've not put this on uh, because I need my Dremel to put some magnets and things into it. So that's going to be going on later. These sections here are where the attack aerofoils will fold down. And this section here is for air brakes, which I'm going to have deployed as though this is coming in on an attack and a bombing run. For the moment, I'm done 
with my top section and I'm going to work on the front aerofoils which go into the bottom hole now. On our bottom hull, front section guys, just above the doors, are these gaps, these holes. Now, when your top hull goes on, there is a little notch which locates just into the very top of here. Okay. The other reason for this little notch is when you put your front aerofoils on, these that I, made, I said to make sure that you don't remove, sit into here. Now these aerofoils are something that I am going to pin because there's quite a lot of movement here and they come out quite fast. So I'm going to put a pin in the middle here and in the middle there so that they line up and will hold themselves in nicely. Or hopefully nicely, <laughs> that's kind of the idea. In a brief moment of clarity it's come to me that the resin here where I was going to pin is rather thin and this top section still isn't stuck in. I want to be able to take it apart so I can get the interior detail. So you can see I've popped two pins on either side of this gap. Okay. What I'm going to do now is get the aerofoil, line it up more or less where I want it to be and just push. And what that is going to do is on the inside here is going to create two indentations. Very, very small ones, but there's one. The other one I'm just going to have to push a little bit harder. So that I know where I'm going to drill to get the holes in the right place. So that I can fit this onto these two pins nicely. So, quick drilling and I'll be right back. Right folks, so top holds on, goes down into the gap, this is in here and at the moment just sits on these two pins. Toying with the idea of whether to glue it so it's secure or maybe just leave the two pins, pop a little magnet in the end and a little piece of flat metal on the inside. Not 100% sure on what to do. Um, they do stick out a little bit from the body but then so do the sides there. Um, having them removable would make life a bit easier from a painting point of view. But mm, I'll have a think on it. I'm not going to glue them just yet. Um, I'll pop this video up and I'll see what you guys on YouTube think. Either way, I'm going to do the same again on the other side. And then we're going to have it together with what looks like wings. We're getting very close to being done, guys. And there you have it so far, folks. So, front aerofoils, you can just see the one on the far side. As I said, currently pinned but not glued, so they are removable if I choose to. Let's re pin that back on. Okay. The back wings, which as you've already seen, are pinned together on the long dowel. The engine sections, the open air brakes at the front, the fin, the back engine. Okay, next project that we're going to be doing on here is probably going to be the landing gear on the underside, so it will stand on its own without having to be braced. Um, then we're going to go around and do some of the exterior detail. So the air brakes are going to come into the back in these hollows, the attack foils which come down and rest on these supports here. Of course the gun housing needs to go on the top and the gaps will need filling with a bit of green stuff and what I need to do for this section is the gun housing will be secured but this slot here will be dremeled out and have a large magnet put in place so that if I choose to I can swap between the turbo laser on the top or, if I so choose, the standard whoop, Thunderhawk macro cannon on the top. Magnets are the way forward. So this is uh, the T-Hawk so far. Wings are on. And uh, it's getting ready for the Siege of Terror. Soon it will be ready to prime and go for paint. Thanks for watching, folks. 
I know this has been a long time coming on this update and I've finally got my ass around to uh, cracking back on with it. Chat to you soon folks and there will be more coming. Bye!